employees at the adjacent contract company building and students at Worldwide College offices. The proposed use is small scale and the size of the building doesn't allow for any significant employment use prospects. The proposals are unlikely to create uh, significant levels of traffic as it is anticipated that the majority of users would use the store by foot. The proposals are considered to be acceptable and are recommended for approval. There's no petitioning connection with this application. Uh, there is an additional condition on the latest design. Thank you, Matthew. So, board council to speak on this? No, Matthew, I don't Any questions? Any questions? Only this bit's in quite well. It's timely considering the presentation you have with Pew. We also need to create more opportunities for people in the area in terms of shopping and transport. So, no objections. So this is the uh, application that was approved in uh, 2013, so retention of Cedar Cottage in the middle, uh, a new house here, and a new house here, um, and you can see them in sort of 3D there. Uh, so the site has had permission for, for three on the site. So just to explain this plan, this element of the, of the site here, this is the main dwelling. Uh, this element here is the, uh, the, the swimming pool and, and gym area. Uh, this element here is the, uh, is the garage, and then obviously you can see the, the tennis court in the bottom corner with access there. So the, pro the proposals are now being put forward would result in a single residential unit occupying the entire site footprint of the proposed development is similar to that permitted in 2013 for the two dwellings and retention of Cedar Cottage. It is undoubtedly a large property, but the plot is very extensive and would comfortably accommodate the development proposed without it appearing cramped or overdeveloped. Amendments have been negotiated in May and made to reduce the footprint and elevation or massing of the leisure elements, including the swimming pool. These would be located in the northeast corner of the site, screened from the view from Croft Drive West by the main house, the garage block, and extensive boundary treatment. The dwelling to the rear of the site, 68 Colby Road, um, so that's this property here, is located some 46 metres from the rear elevation of the swimming pool, and the house itself is 56 metres away, so just to explain those elements, the nearest part of the swimming pool block, which is this block here, 46 metres away from the rear elevation from 68, and the nearest part of the house, which is this one here, is 56 metres away from the rear elevation. Um, number four, Croft Drive West, which is this property down here at the bottom uh, right hand corner of the screen, is located over 40 metres away from the nearest part of the proposed dwelling and 28 metres from the tennis court. The new dwelling has been designed to include bays and dormers, balconies and recesses, which have been employed to give a modern interpretation of arts and crafts style houses in Colby, detailing historic features and forms, whilst proposing 
uh, use of local resource materials that will reflect those used on other properties within the wider area. The boundaries will be landscaped to fill the views of the property with the best <laughs> specimen trees being retained and new, new landscaping being provided, giving the landscape appearance that will not only soften the development when viewed from Croft Drive West, but also enhance the conservation area by, by allowing a program of managed landscaping and conservation. The proposals are considered to be acceptable and are recommended for approval of that is in
to fit a large building. And I, again, I respect this, this man to build his dream house, that's good, I want him to do it, I want the plot developed, but he has to follow the guidelines that we all follow, okay? Okay, uh, well, just look at the property board, the property lines that I've drawn the last two. I've even measured every property where large properties back onto each other, I've measured it, and they're generally 40 to 50 meters. The closest I can find in the whole of Colby, where a large point of that object is 17 meters. If this was 70 miles, I wouldn't be here now. What is it? Well, let's look at the policies, I think. HS4, uh, the proposed view of a scale which relates well to the surrounding property, and particularly got existing densities, form, and development. Don't think it does that. When new housing is proposed for the existing residential areas, it's important that it's been blended well with that already built. Don't think it does that with respect either. Carly Conservation Area, um, the management plan. When buildings, this is Carly, Carly 1, new buildings should respect the footprint sizes of existing neighborhood buildings, the relationship between their spacing, the road and the site boundaries. With respect, I don't think it does that either. Just another retaining new plan feature to design a layout reference to. I mean, I've got six or seven other references which I think is broke, but I think you get the gist of what I'm saying. Just because it's big, it's not better. I want them to build there, but follow the guidelines the rest of us live by. You know, that's, that's what I'm after. We've obviously taken lots of time to do everything. Thank you.
We therefore hope the committee are able to agree with the officer's recommendation and approve the application. Thank you very much. Yeah. 
Excuse me, there has actually. There's been an objection. Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. All right, sorry. Oh, sorry.
medicine application was that was subject to a member site on Tuesday. Commissioners saw the erection of a new dorm of envelope to the rear of the main dwelling. The application is in outline with access and layout sought at this stage and landscaping appearance and scale preserved for further approval. An extant commission exists granted by planning committee in September last year for the conversion of the existing outbuilding self-contained dwelling. Um, you can just see that building there uh, within the, uh, the grey area. It's that square. A similar consent was approved for the outbuilding next door, which has been implemented. That outbuilding has also been extended at ground floor with a window and a door towards the application site. So this is the outbuilding here, on, uh, which is 81A. Um, an extension has been built on the back, and for those members who are present on the site, um, the people who've built that extension have put a window um, in that elevation, which directly looks onto the application site. It's at ground floor, and there is a boundary fence that runs along the site, um, but the applicants at this site have placed the window that looks into that site. The front proposed door of the bungalow could be some, at uh, the front of the proposed door, so I'll just show you. So this is the front, these are the two sides, and this is the back of the door. So the front elevation would be some 19 metres from the window that I just made reference to on the adjacent, um, the adjacent out uh, uh, converted outbuilding at 81. The layout internally of the proposed new dwelling could also be designed so that any room at this point is not habitable. However, given that the existing given the existing boundary tree and the fact that the window in, ne in next door's ground floor extension has been angled towards the application site, it is not considered that the shortfall would result in a loss of privacy of amenity. We would normally expect to see 21 meters, but the distance from the front elevation to that angled window is 19 meters. Any dormers to the first floor of the proposal would be sited on the rear elevations, and it's these dormers here, uh, which would look uh, directly towards the Street parking and private amenity space is provided for both the proposed and host dwelling. The outbuilding, which has consent, will be demolished to, provided, uh, to provide additional garden space for 83 Silver Massey Lane. The proposal is considered to be acceptable and is recommended for approval. There is no petition in association with the application. Thank you, Matthew. What has Alex
to uh, access. As the HS10, the background development policy, and I quote, proposals for the developments between one to three dwellings and the existing dwellings and access by a dedicated private drive will not be permitted unless the proposed proposal fulfills the following criteria. First, that criteria is that I quote, the proposed access being sufficient to provide a private drive of three metres width with a lindsay strip to one or both sides and adequate passing places. We look at the plans. Uh, the access is 2.9 metres and it's just going to be 14 metres long. In addition, additionally, the, from the, the depth of the existing dwelling. I noticed that the plans propose a 2 metre high fence. There's an existing uh, fence on the right hand side of the plot. Uh, I see no provision for uh, any uh, amenity strips or for any passing places. So, you know, I, I would argue that access is in direct contravention of the HS10. Um, I think that's probably you know, grounds for refusal in the term, as well as the separation distances. Uh, members who attend the site business may have also noticed a stable block at the end of the garden. Uh, looking through the, the reports, I see no mention of a stable block in the planning district. Uh, members may wish to ascertain the status of this building. Whether or not this application is effective. In closing, Chair, I ask the committee to consider the discrepancies in the plans and the separation distances, uh, except that the separation distances are well below uh, 21 metres, which is the uh, legal standard. Uh, and I propose that the committee propose uh, this application on, on that first ground. Also, I ask the committee to reject the application on the grounds of access to nearly 2.9 metres with no passing place. If, however, committee are minded to uh, approve the application, then can I urge the committee to explore what conditions are available to ensure that the health building is de demolished in a safe, controlled manner to minimise the impact on the environment and the income property? And if you share that to the committee at the time.
extension has subsequently been built on the back of the one um, And I've measured that on the plan, and, and that comes out of over two metres, so that reduces the, um, the separation distance down to 19 metres and not 16, it is 19. However, having said that, um, the applicants of this property have essentially prejudiced themselves by citing the window as angled towards their neighbour's garden. So we have to take into consideration what the neighbours themselves have done in this instance. But having said that, as I, as I said at the beginning, because this is largely an outline application, we still have a significant element of control uh, over how that dwelling, uh, if it's approved, would be uh, set out and laid out. So I, I am um, satisfied that um, good separation We've also had the advantage of the fact that the committee um, approved in September last year the conversion of this unit into a self-contained unit. So the consent already benefits from um, permission for two dwellings on that site. Um, the host dwelling in front of and obviously the conversion of this building here. So this application would um, involve the removal of that building and then moving uh, the, the second dwelling further down the site. Um, it is right to say that the demolition of that property should be properly dealt with through um, building control and the Party Wall Act to ensure that any demolition of that uh, property is done in a safe manner and doesn't impact on the uh, structural integrity of the 81A. But that's, that's not a planning issue, it is a building control uh, issue or a, um, a Party Wall Act which the two parties would have to enter into. And then finally, I think um, the issue about the stable block. Um, yes, um, I noted that myself, I think, when we attended the site visit on Tuesday. Um, there is no um, planning history for a stable on that site. Um, now, if the stable is being used um, as solely um, ancillary to the, uh, to the people who live at number 83, um, then that wouldn't have needed planning. Um, you can erect an outbuilding in your, in your garden uh, that is ancillary to the purpose of the enjoyment of your dwelling under committed development. Um, horses are slightly different, um, so we would need to know whether it is just for the private enjoyment of the people who are living at the property, uh, whether it's a livery stable, so are those um, horses being, uh, are they not? And um, depending on the outcome of this application, uh, then we may need to uh, deal with that, uh, that issue separately via an enforcement matter. Um, but having said that, we determined this application having regard to the planning merits of a, a dwelling on this site, and the stable block really doesn't have any a bearing on the recommendation that we put through each members. Thank you, Matthew. I think that's helped clarify last question. Um, can you say something about nationally which have 
sort of to um, lessen the, the tight grip that, that the 